With Bad Blood 2024 now in the history books, the biggest takeaways from this pay-per-view is that Drew McIntyre and CM Punk had one of the greatest feuds in recent history and ended it off with one of the most insane, bloodiest Hell in a Cell matches I've ever seen. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan's feud just got 10 times weirder, and the final boss is back! What's going on? My name is 12 Beats, and here I am, 2 for 2 with these longer type videos. And I was so surprised that the last video came out to be 20 minutes long. I was like so shocked. I did not think I was talking for that long, so my apologies. I'll try to keep this one a bit more brief and concise to the point. But with that being said, here's my bad blood review. So I'm gonna start with the main event. As much as I really, really wanna talk about the Hell in a Cell match, I'll save that for later because I gotta talk about The Rock. The, this match, the tag match between Cody and Roman versus the Bloodline 2.0, it had that same like uh, format as the uh, Bloodline Civil War from last year at Money in the Bank 2023, where the first 15 minutes or so was kind of like, um, I don't know, it was like a lot of stare downs and a lot of face to faces and not too many wrestling moves, which is all right. I'm not like a wrestling purist by any means. Like I don't mind the stare downs. I don't mind the face offs, especially if it's something like, you know, Cody and Roman bickering on who's going to start the match or something like that. But before we talk about the actual match, because I already started talking about it, my fault, the entrances were so hilarious. It felt like everything that could go wrong went wrong. The second Solo and Jacob are in the ring, they're surrounded by a marching band and they're performing Cody's theme song, which I thought, okay, this is fire. This is cool. I'm singing along with the song, with the instrumental, the crowd does the whoa and all that, but it literally is like, that's it. Because the second the music starts playing, I think the band was supposed to play with the music and maybe they didn't get the cue to start playing or something. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a part of the band. But they didn't play. And so then they had to redo Cody's music. It was horrendous. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, shout out to Cody doing that with the band because I think they had like a viral video a couple weeks ago or a month ago. Um, but yeah, Cody and Roman, they had their little tag match. Um, I like how in like the last like 15 minutes it started to pick up a little bit with... Uh, Roman and Solo having their little one-on-one -on -one match and then Jacob, you know, interfering and then Cody like literally splitting off and being like, yo, I'll take out Jacob. I'm going to sacrifice my body, jump off this top rope and, and, and splash to the announce table and you go deal with Solo and win the match for us. Like he literally saluted Roman before he sacrificed his body. And, and I think that was a moment that Roman gained a little respect for Cody because he was willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good. And that was the whole idea when they had their little meetup in the football stadium a couple weeks ago, was that, look, I got your back, you got mine, but once this match is over, once that bell rings, it's back to business. And the bell rang, Jimmy made his return, saved the day, it was fun, it was nice, it was, it was wholesome. They won the match, boom, the, the promise is over with. Roman has no reason to, to, to fuck with Cody no more after this. Then the Bloodline 2.0 start beating up Cody, Jimmy, now this is the important part that I, a lot of people are like ignoring. It was Jimmy who convinced Roman to help Cody. And I think that that is the seed, the first seed that was planted for Jimmy and Jay to start reconnecting. Because if you remember, Jay and Cody are really good friends. They won the tag team titles together. And maybe that's like the first like olive branch extended where it's like, hey, you helped out my friend. You may really truly be a different person than you were earlier this year. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're my brother. Let's go back to being the Usos locked in. Um, but yeah, so they, they helped out Cody. Roman hands Cody back the title that he lost at WrestleMania 40. Boom, The Rock comes back. And it is, I'm not even lying to you. Like when I, when I first started watching wrestling, I was like, it was like 2008. Like, I was not, like, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I knew that they were big deals, but they never hit as hard as, like, a John Cena to me, you know what I'm saying? Or a Jeff Hardy. So, it is insane that The Rock's music hit, and I literally, I felt the mana. Like, I felt the final boss arriving. Like, it was insane. Like, I'm, I love the final boss character. I could give two shits about The Rock. Like, I did not care when The Rock showed up earlier this year on the January 1st edition of Monday Night Raw. Like, it didn't it didn't move me, you know? But the final boss character is peak. That's not even a gimmick. That's an actual real life person. Because The Rock, like, genuinely, like, owns, like, a part of, like, WWE or whatever the fuck. I don't know about all that business savvy, you know, insider information or whatever. 
but it's a genuine like thing like he runs this shit he's the final boss you know he did the one two three and i had like a little theory about it that i uploaded like on tiktok and and on the youtube shorts and if you want to check that out go ahead but my whole theory was that the rock was reminding cody that he pinned him at wrestlemania 40 and he wants the wwe championship that's why i think it was done on purpose that the rock came out after roman handed cody the title because the rock wants that title and roman is pretty much passing it up to cody he's like hey you're we're cool i'm gonna come for that title later but like we're cool right now so i think the rock is just like yeah fuck all that like friendly shit like uh-uh this is hatred bro this i don't like this guy and i want his title and i'm gonna get the title besides all that the best part about this pay-per-view and once again i highlight the best part about this pay-per-view happened after the pay-per-view was over and it was literally while Triple H was doing the press conference. And when I say best part, I'm talking about everything after the Hell in a Cell match. But Triple H was at the press conference and he literally said like, hey, Cody was supposed to be out here, but like, I don't know where he's at. So I'm just going to be out here a little bit longer and talk to the, the reporters and stuff like that. If in real time, I'm not even lying to you. It was like chaos. I'm watching the press conference and on Twitter, people are like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. KO just turned on Cody and The Rock is cutting a promo on Instagram Live. Like, it really, it felt like, like, uh, what's it called? It just felt like a real life world. The pay-per-view was over, but like there was so much stuff happening at the same exact time. But let's backtrack. Let's talk about, um, I want to, I really do want to save the Hell in a Cell match for the, I don't know. You know what? No, I'm not going to save the, I'm not going to save the Hell in a Cell. I want to talk about the Hell in a Cell because everything else was kind of wild. I'm not, like, it was this is probably one of the most cursed pay-per-views I've ever seen. And I say that because I just started getting back into wrestling a couple years ago. So I wasn't around during the Vince era, and I'm sure there was a lot of cursed pay-per-views back when Vince was running things. But under Triple H, this was the weirdest pay-per-view I've ever seen. Because you had, um, yeah, I'm just going to run through because I don't want to talk. I, I genuinely, I don't want to talk about, like, a lot of this stuff. Like, Bailey versus Nia Jax, that was a decent, like, match. It wasn't their SummerSlam match, even though I was really hyped up to see this match. Um, it was really fucked that they did that, they did that match after the Hell in a Cell match, because how are you going to follow that? In all honesty, if I was booking things, put Damien and Finn after, after, um, uh, what's it called? The Hell in a Cell match. That's a, that's a non-title match. Like, that is like, and there's no fucking like, oh, I had this whole rant in the last video about how there was no emotion in this Damien and Finn, like, feud, and they proved me right. Like, I'm watching Damien and, and Finn fight, and it literally feels like I'm watching the main event of Monday Night Raw, because they are doing the same exact moves that they always done. It's so ironic, because in the last video that I made, I called Damien Priest the Puerto Rican Hulk Hogan, and I'm not even gonna lie to you, like, I know people throw that Hogan, like, last name around, like, Sammy Hogan, or Bailey Hogan, or uh, Becky Hogan, like, but I'm not even lying to you when I tell you, Damien Priest, what the fuck? He took a coup de grace to the back of the neck. And then he took another one to the, 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 the middle of his back, back to back, no pun intended. And guess what? He doesn't even fall to his knees, bro. He doesn't even fall to his, he doesn't even, even lay down for, for a little pin, maybe even a near fall. No, you know what he does, bro? He literally just stands up and does a south of heaven to Finn and pins him one, two, three, boom, end of the match. That's it. Like, oh my God, bro. I don't know who's writing this Judgment Day stuff. But post SummerSlam, whoever is writing this Judgment Day stuff has to stop. Because I, how in the hell, like I get if Damien and, and, and Finn was just like a one-off, like okay, boom, this was just the weirdest finish of, of the, the match the, of the entire night. But then you have Rhea and Liv right after, and I won't lie, I called it. I literally called it. Like in my last video, I said that this entire feud has been weird. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like they, they aren't talking as if they are characters who have known each other for years. They're talking like they are hollowed out people. They're talking like very superficial stuff. Like, oh, you took my Dom Dom. You took my, my, my title, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, you guys were best friends. You guys were tag partners. Like have some heat, bro. Have some emotion behind it. Like if, if Rhea is walking into this match and she knows that Liv has took her title, took her man, tried to take out her knee, tried to end her career, all that type of stuff. She should be walking in pissed as hell. Why the fuck is Rhea all giddy? Like, oh my god, we're gonna put Dom Dom in a, in a shark cage and we know you're scared of heights, Dom. Raise it up. Why is this match more about Dom, bro? Like, I don't, like, I thought be, I thought Dom being put in a shark cage was gonna take him out of the equation. But no, Dom being a part of the shark cage fucked up the whole match to begin with. Like, oh my god. I hate to be so, like, um, flustered about it. 
because I don't want to be, I don't want to come off negative. I really don't. Like, I don't, I'm never one of those, like, wrestling fans who's just like, oh, this is garbage, this is trash, blah, 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 and never give any, like, critique or, like, what they could have done better or how they could have done things better. But I'm not lying to you. Rhea and Liv are great wrestlers. They are great wrestlers. They know their characters very well. It should have just been a one-on-one -on -one match. It should have just been a rematch. That's it. Adam Pearce could have just been like, hey, you have been ruining every single woman's title match ever since Liv won that title. Like, you're barred from ringside. You cannot be allowed here, bro. Let Rhea and Liv have their match. But so be it. Put Dom in a shark cage and, 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 and ruin the whole finish, bro. Because Dom was hanging off the shark cage. Rhea tells the referee, and he has the little camera on his ear, tells the referee like, hey, I gotta handle this. I'm gonna go out for a little minute. Let me handle this. And the ref is just like, you do you, Rhea. I'll, I'll allow it. What? What? I, I like, I'm so lost because why is the referee involved in Rhea and Dom and Liv's love triangle? Why does he want to see Rhea have her comeuppance? I don't get it. Like, it makes no sense. Okay, cool. Fine. Regardless of what the ref was doing, but the ref plays a big part in the in, after I'm done with this rant. Regardless of what the ref is doing, right? He lets Rhea go out and hit Dom with a few kendo shots. He's he's not even a part of the match. Cool. No DQ in that sense, right? Raquel Rodriguez makes her return and attacks Rhea in front of the ref. Like, whoever put this match together should have put something in place to take the ref out. I know there have been a lot of ref bumps in recent history. Probably in the beginning of wrestling time, referees get bumped left and right. There was a referee bump in Nia Jax versus Bailey, but do something to get the, the to get this ref out of the situation. Maybe look, honestly, I think and here's my theory. And like I said, I don't want to just just trash something, trash something, trash something. Here's my theory about what was supposed to happen. I think the referee is supposed to check on Dom. And I don't get why he was supposed to check on Dom because he, in, for some reason, doesn't care about Dom's well-being. He sees the man as hanging off of the shark cage and lets Rhea go hit him with a kendo stick. So, whatever. So he checks on Dom. His back is turned. That's when Raquel is supposed to hit, hit Rhea. But the timing was wrong and the ref clearly saw it. So he had to call off the match and it fucking took the air out of the entire arena. Like, it was... It, I mean, it took the air out of my body because I was just like... I, well, I think the air already left my body when I saw Dom fall off the shark cage because I won't lie, my heart stopped beating for a second. That was so scary. Um, but it was like it was it was so bad. Like I, for the life of me, everybody in this feud is great at what they do. Even Dom. Dom is amazing. Rhea is amazing. Liv is amazing. Even Raquel is amazing. But it's like it's like you're just you're misusing these characters and you're 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 messing this thing whole, you're messing this whole thing up by making it more theatrical than it has to be but yeah so moving on from all of that moving away from the judgment day stuff all right let's just move away from that as a whole my fault i literally just realized that like i was supposed to talk about the hell in a cell match but like i've just went on that whole judgment day tangent and now there's like literally no order to this so i'm just gonna keep going so bailey versus nia Jax. Uh, that was, it was a hard, it was a match, like I said earlier, it was hard to follow after the Hell in a Cell match, you should not have put that after, it was a title match, it should have felt kind of important, but I was, like, so exhausted, but it is what it is, um, it was, it was decent, it wasn't bad by any means, I think the Hurricane Rana that Nia did was a bit wild, I won't lie, but, hey man, you try something, it fails, that's whatever, move on. I said in my last video that Tiffany Stratton is, like, on par to be one of the biggest baby faces in WWE. And you have a legend like Bailey in the ring. You're facing off against Nia Jax. The, the whole title match is, is there. It's right in front of your face. And the crowd is chanting for Tiffany. Like, it's so crazy. Like, the crowd, it's just like Roman. Like, I'm not, not to compare Tiffany to Roman by any means. But the reason why the crowd loves Roman so much nowadays is because we've been wanting to cheer for him for so long. Like, and now we have a reason to. And so the fans are 100% behind him. The second Tiffany turns on Nia, the second Tiffany becomes a full-on babyface, the crowd is gonna love her. It was a cool little match, Nia got the win, but she also channeled her inner Undertaker, which was kind of funny. Like I said, I'll just group all that up together, the Judgment Day stuff and the Bailey versus Nia, it was so weird, it, it, it I don't know. The, the thing about Bailey versus Nia is that it was weird because it could have been executed better. The Judgment Day stuff was weird because it, from the start, just didn't make any sense. None of it made any sense. Like. But I'm not going to go off that again, but that's whatever. So let's just say Bad Blood in, in a nutshell was just Cody, Roman, and The Rock. 
and top tier Hell in a Cell match. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about right now. The Hell in a Cell match between CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. One of one, top tier, a little bit too much blood for my liking. Like, I, I don't mind, like, you, whatever floats your boat. Like, CM Punk bleeding made sense. That was the story. I walked in expecting that. Drew bleeding like a fucking mess was not in my book whatsoever. Like, and come to find out, it was completely by accident. Like, he wasn't supposed to be bleeding, let alone bleed that much. Like, he needed, like, 16 staples. Like, ugh, it was nasty. But, no, it was it was top tier. Like, you could feel the, the hatred between one another. I think Mike Cole said on commentary, like, this wasn't going to be a five-star classic. Like, they're not going to be flying off the top rope. They're not going to be, you know, being the best. They're not going to try to out-wrestle each other or whatever. They wanted to beat the fuck out of each other. And I felt it. I saw the hatred in their eyes. Like, you can watch this match, and that part with the table leg literally encapsulates this entire feud. The table leg was not supposed to be a part of this match. The table leg wasn't even supposed to be a character in this feud. <laughs> but it was, because they tried to kill each other with it multiple times. And that's this feud in a nutshell, because this feud was never supposed to happen. It was completely by accident, just like the table leg being so wobbly to begin with. It was a complete accident, but then they took that, and then they ran with it. I love this match so much blood aside i loved it i loved every bit of it i loved the ending i loved i loved everything like it was oh it was the perfect match bro it was one of the greatest opening matches i've ever seen it was one of the greatest hell in a cell matches i've ever seen cm punk and drew mcintyre if i don't see either one of you till next year till the rumble i understand you guys put your bodies through hell. It was the first match, I swear, that like I'm literally in my room watching it and I had to stand up and give it a little standing ovation because they put their bodies on the line. They even did the whole um, uh, thing at the end where, where CM Punk faints and like they have like a medical team administer oxygen to CM Punk and they try to help out Drew getting back up. It literally, like, shout out to Triple H for reviving the Hell in a Cell stipulation and making it something where it's like you are actually scared for these wrestlers because after seeing that, CM Punk and Drew have set a precedent that I don't think any other wrestler could, like, top. Like, the next time you see a Hell in a Cell match, it has to be a genuine blood feud. Like, I can't watch this Hell in a Cell match and not think, like, oh my god, these guys actually hate each other. If you are a casual fan and have never watched wrestling, have never watched any part of their feud from this past year, and you watch this match, it speaks volumes. It speaks for itself. These men hate each other and they're willing to kill each other just so that they can end this feud. They both want this feud to end. They don't even, like, that's the craziest part about it. They don't want the match to end. They just want the other person to end. Like, stop. CM Punk wants Drew to stop. He wants to go back to his wife. He wants to go back to being the happy-go-lucky self that he was. And Drew is just like, no, I got to get rid of you. You got to get out of my company. Out of here. Done. And it's like, that's why, like, Michael Cole's call about this is not going to be a five-star wrestling classic is so peak. Because it literally, they don't care about the bell. They don't care about the match being over. They want to put the other person in the ground. It was, and you could just see it. You could feel it. And it was top tier. Hats off to them. Um, but yeah, that's my bad blood review. Once again, I think this video has gone a bit longer than I expected. So if this is another 20 minute video, then my fault. And also leave some comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts were on bad blood. Let me know, uh, you know, what was your favorite match, favorite moment. And honestly, I... Oh my god. I was about to, like, it's so crazy because I was so ready to end this video, but then I remembered that there was a crown jewel championship that was announced. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like I said, this whole pay-per-view was so weird. Like, so you had Triple H come out and, and show off this freaking diamond encrusted title that I know cost a bit. Like, cost, man, that shit cost like a, a whole country because that shit was covered in diamonds. Um, And the whole stipulation is that they're going to have like world champions fight the other world champions. It's like Survivor Series brand warfare type stuff. Uh, which is kind of cool. So we're probably gonna get Gunther versus Cody and I I don't know how we're gonna do Nia versus Liv, but that's cool I guess because they're both heels, but We'll see how that one plays out um, So that's gonna be cool. They're gonna win that title And I guess it's not gonna be like an actual title that they defend and it's gonna be a yearly thing So it's like the king of the ring. I guess you win this thing and it's just like Never to be talked about ever again till next year um, So that's all right Gunther came out and just showed why he's the funniest wrestler on this planet because he is like like gunther's whole character from now on as like ever since he's been champion gunther's character should literally be like i'm the best wrestler in the world and i'm also the funniest comedian in the world because he just comes out and does stand up like 
I have yet to see Gunther do like an actual promo where it's like, I'm gonna face you and, and I'm gonna beat you and I'm gonna retain my title, blah, 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 blah. He comes out and he just has the biggest grin on his face every time he talks because he knows he's about to say some funny ass shit. He told Goldberg off, he told his son off, like it was so funny. Um, Sammy came out running down and fought him and they're gonna have their match on Monday uh, or tonight or later tonight because the video is gonna come out on Monday. Uh, so that's gonna be all right. I don't think we're gonna, I don't think Sammy's gonna win as much as I would love to see a Sammy World title run. That's, that, it sucks to say, but that's later down the line because Gunther is just on top. Um, so that's gonna be the end of my Bad Blood review. Once again, I'm two for two for these videos. Hopefully I keep it going. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Uh, all that type of stuff. If you wanna do that, do it. If you don't, that's cool. Uh, hope you have fun. If you stay till the end, I appreciate it. Uh, see you on the next video. Bye.